Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Russie from Porky's Corner, the voice of hardcore boxing. Uh, today, I'm joined by my good friend Terry from London. How are you doing, Terry? Uh, mate, feel good. How are you? I'm all right. I want. Uh, I want going to be doing all till till first of Feb, but I've had to come up here to get these uh, uh, trainers to for Martin to post them. Just had a, a email from the gentleman who uh, Julian went to his house the other day. Reese Redhead in Leeds. He had a, took him a Holyfield sign glove in a, in a glass box thing. Gorgeous it was. Ended up nipping into the house and speaking with his family and all that. So that's good, isn't it? All positive yeah. stuff. Uh, but now I've got a couple of hospital appointments with my stomach and whatnot. Uh, so I've took a bit of time out, but... I thought while I'm up here, I might as well get some at dawn and I'd have a chat with you for ages. And oh, we, we, we could, giving them a little bonus. Yeah, yeah, giving them a little bonus. They bought, this is the second Brucey bonus for them. Even all them trolls that are, uh, that watch as well, uh, give, hey, give, them, give, give them something to watch. Oh, there's, there's one of them in your comments, mate. What, what an absolute idiot. So <laughs> he wrote something in the comments and normally I don't read comments, oh. but this one caught my eye because it was the only one I could read. And he was talking about, he said something like, I don't agree with what you say about Tyson Fury. So I went and Googled you. And I was like, okay, cool. And then he put the laughing emojis at the end of it. And I'm a bit like, mate, do you feel really clever because you found out I'm a human being that exists? I was like, mate, you, you could just come to any show you want, mate, and I'm there. Do you know what I mean? Like, you've got some amazing fans, Russ, but you, ain't got, you haven't half got some headbangers amongst the, the number. A small minority of them, but there are some headbangers there. Listen, mate, I want bit blue-eyed boy at this place here if you want for all these uh, haters that watch. So keep hating because they're doing me a massive favour. Because these come up to it and they say, oh, you know, you were right, you know, we read them comments. <laughs> but uh, it's all good stuff, isn't it? We're not burgling old folks' houses or uh, robbing banks, are we? So we're just giving an opinion on the sport of boxing, which uh, we, we think needs changing. Now, what I want to speak about today is Big Meech. And Dillian White, the lone wolf. Is the 20 million being carved up? Or has Gareth A. Davis and Michelle Phelps been played? What do you think? Uh, so, th th so there are two bits to this, right? So number one, when there's a fight as big as Undisputed, everyone's trying to insert themselves into it, right? It's like football, Porky. You know, people think they can make deals happen, so they talk as if they can get the deal done, even though they don't represent any of the players, right? And it happens all the time in football. And it's happening with boxing, just simply because that undisputed looks like it's a 150 million quid fight. So there are guys running around the Middle East now trying to make that fight happen so they can get a cut. And it doesn't involve Bob, it doesn't involve Eddie, it doesn't involve Frank. And what happens is, you bring guys like Joshua out to Dubai, yeah? yeah? You give him the shisha, you show him a good time, you know, anything goes. And then you sit them down and go, mate, let's be real. What would it take for you to step aside for Usyk? Yeah. And this did happen in Dubai. And in Dubai, Joshua said, for 15 million, I would step aside, yeah. right? It, it wasn't, I don't even think it was like a secret. It was like, yeah, Joshua will step aside for the right fee. And you can go back in the media. He was talking about, listen, you give me the right offer, I'll step aside. Eddie Hearn was talking 40 million, but the number Joshua gave in, the, in Dubai was 15. And yeah. so someone has gone off to Abu Dhabi, Bahrain, Saudi, wherever they've gone to and said, Joshua will step aside for 15 million to make this fight happen. And that's how it sort of got into the public domain. And why would Gareth A. Davis come out with that then if it's without foundation? Well, it's not without foundation. The problem you have is uh, it, because it, it's been said so often in the in the circles, right? You know the circles I'm talking about. And uh, people act like Fury hasn't got his ear to what's happening in the Middle East. Of course he does. So I can imagine Fury's there go, oh, if you'll step aside for 15 million, let's get this done. Because remember, Fury's got one fight left with ESPN, so they would rather it was undisputed and not Dillian White. Yeah, I see what you mean. So it, it all looks good for... If this is true, and I'm very sceptical about anything that that might say, but 
if this is true, Dylan White's got to think that he's won lottery. He's not fought for the European title yet, and they're throwing millions at him. Zero it won't be from. millions. The problem, the problem you have is when you really break down the economics of the fight, you can't pay someone 15 million to step aside. What no, will end up happening is, is, is cheaper to, to let Usyk deal with Joshua and you just deal with the winner of that. It's just cheaper. It's a, it's a weird time at the moment, the sport, isn't it? I mean, I mean, if Big Meech takes step aside after all that big roadman killer talk, it, it, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I mean, I saw something this morning that Fat Dan had, had, had put out uh, on talk sport and he's saying he should swallow his pride and take the 15 million dollars or pounds sterling, whatever. But I think people need to go and have a look at what exactly these fights do pull in. The only people that could give them that sort of step aside are the Saudis, aren't they? Because they wouldn't get that from Vegas, would they? Or New York or London. Yeah. Even then, the Saudis, they just put their money into Newcastle. Is there additional money available to, to do all the boxing stuff? Maybe, yeah, because Newcastle can't buy anyone in this window. So maybe there's a few quid floating around somewhere in Saudi, but it just doesn't make sound business sense at the moment for me. I I think you just let you let Fury fight who he has to fight, let Joshua fight who he has to fight, and let the winners fight each other. Just move on. Yeah. Do you think that uh, it will it will happen? Uh, White, Joshua, and Usyk, Fury, or what do you think? I I'm more confident about Usyk, Joshua happening. I'm, I'm not confident about White, White, uh, Joshua. They don't want to risk Joshua and Dylan White. In my opinion, Price just sent out that fight uh, a long time ago. Uh, he, he were hiding behind contract clauses and all sorts. The first offer at Wembley against Joshua in the rematch. And he's just surprised to send out the Fury fight. So I don't, I'm not so sure if Dylan White, aka the lone wolf, the can man, I'm not so sure if Dylan White wants to accept any challenge where he's not a favourite. I don't know. What do you think, Terry? Uh, I think he has to take the fight. I think he would. Yeah. I just think he's badly advised us. I yeah. think you've got to accept short money when you're the B side. And then the hope is you win and you become the A side and you dictate terms. You can't be there on the B side asking for close to 50-50. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. And um, where does this all leave Eddie now? Because you would have thought, wouldn't you, that Warren, if the, it's all ifs and we're all, we're all like trying to estimate and predict what's going on, but if... So where does this leave Eddie if what if he's forced into a corner where Joshua has to fight Usyk? Because that's what Frank Warren's team want. They want Usyk in with Joshua because they know that Usyk can probably put him to kick. Where does that yeah. leave Eddie if he does take the Usyk fight and there's no step aside? It's shit a bust, isn't it, for Eddie, really, isn't it? To be honest. So here's the thing. None of those guys are in camp at the moment. They're all training and they're all knocking about, ticking over. None of them are in camp. They haven't recruited sparring partners. They haven't done anything. No one's in camp. And where are we? Last week in January? Yeah. So none of them are fighting till April. Well, what fuel are you going to sack his team if he wasn't given a date by end of February? If he weren't well, fighting, he was going to sack his promotional team, wasn't he, if he weren't given a date? That's what he said a few months ago. Well... He still hasn't got a date. Still hasn't got a date, and he got a month to go. Okay. First is tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. What about uh, the rumours circulating that it's Robert Garcia going to train Joshua? You think that's true? Uh, why wouldn't you go to the Reynosos if you wanted that Latin, Latin American style? I genuinely think. There are trainers that can train big guys and there are trainers that can train small guys. And it's rare that you can do both. Yeah. That's what I... Like, Freddie Roach isn't notorious for training heavyweights, right? But with smaller guys, he seems to do better. You know, if you look at... 
Emmanuel Stewart. Was he really that good with the little guys? Maybe Jeff Fennick in a push. But he's more known for the bigger guys he worked with. Yeah. So I don't see Garcia as a trainer of big men. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think that would make sense either. I can see him working with like a Derek James. But I don't, I don't think he even knows. Like they don't know who's going to train. They don't know where they're going to train yet. Yeah. All of the stuff is up in there. <sighs> The Josh, Josh, Team Joshua seems like a mess at the moment as an outsider looking in. You know, when it was with McCracken, you knew he'd do a few weeks at Finchley and then he'd go up to Sheffield and that seemed to kind of work. It seemed to work. Now you're like, well, okay, who's going to train him? Where's he going to train if he's not a GB? That's correct, that, what you've just said there, because Frox used to go two week on his own then he'd go to, up to Sheffield. Two week in Gedlin, then he'd go up there. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. that, now. So, so you end up going, okay, so what, what is Joshua going to do? And it doesn't seem that he he knows what he wants to do because he was talking tough after the fight. Of course, I'm going to do the rematch. I'm a fighting guy, man. I have to fight. I'm a throwback. I, I'm going to fight him immediately. Big you Meech, know, Big Meech. Larry Hoover. Frank Lucas. You were throwing all them names about one of all them road men. <laughs> I'm about that life. Is he still serving up? <laughs> <laughs> now, where, where, are, where, where are I on with all this, right? This is how, this is, Joshua not still running around with a nine bar and we did boat, is it? This is where I am with all this, right? Well, what happened to all the stay humble and, 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 and all that carry on and, and stay hungry and, and uh, I'm a nice guy and all this, I'm a humble guy. He's a fight, he's a fight. I'm a humble guy, I'm humble. What happened to all that? And now he's, he's big meat, isn't he? He's murder incorporated, Larry Hoover job. Well, where's the loss? Well, how can we go from that to that? Or has the mask slipped? Maybe he listens to you. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, man, is a, but there was, there was only so long he could pretend, right? Yeah, well, maybe, uh, maybe Joshua's just fed up of this manufactured rubbish that he's portraying himself as. It's a bit like these people on social media with all these uh, odd names pretending to be other people in comment sections. You know, I'm not going to mention the names, but. Some uh, Cameron sent me some up this morning. Have you seen this? I went, Jesus, who was that? Some actor from 70s or something. So, uh, Matt Sugden or something. So he's, we've replied back, are you Matt Sugden from Emmerdale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a fucking character. He's dead, isn't he? I mean, fuck it. And I, I think it's gone down that road now. Just a mess, isn't it? It's... Well, look, social media is a mess. There are a lot of people who love to get in comment sections behind the mask. But then, Russ, they're the sort of guys, man, and, you know what I mean? They're living in the bed sit. They haven't had a girlfriend since they were 14. I mean, they're just mad at everyone. They're mad at everyone who's living life. So I just leave them to live their life. I don't, I don't engage with them. I don't listen to them. They're not relevant to me. Yeah. But in terms of Joshua, look, mate, you know, with the Ruiz thing, Russ, here's the thing about the Ruiz thing. He could always come back and say, Andy Ruiz will let himself go after this. He won't be able to cope with the pressure. I'll come back and it'll be an easy fight second time around, right? With the Usyk, there are no weak links in Usyk. Usyk's not going to blow up. He's not going to be over. He's a complete he's fighter, him, isn't he? Terry, he's a complete fighter, isn't he? Yeah, and he's a guy that he's a life, lifelong fighter. Well trained. Josh is not going to outrun him. Josh is not going to outlift him. Josh is not going to out anything Usyk. So all of a sudden, you meet what you can almost call you a nemesis, and you're like, I don't know if I can beat this guy. And a southpaw. No, but he thought wasn't Camarelli a southpaw in the Olympics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I thought he got beat in that fight, Josh. I only thought he beat the Chinaman out the four fights. Me? Did you? Uh. Did he fight? Did he fight the Ukrainian as well? Ditch guy, I can't well, remember. Cool, he fought the Cuban guy. That was a shocker. They they all lodged a complaint, didn't they? Except the uh, the the, uh, the China man. All the others lodged yeah. a complaint, didn't they? There were three complaints lodged from that fight alone. 
And yeah, I that was the most corrupt thing I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was bad. And I think to balance it out, they, they give Savannah Marshall a lot and, and others. But I personally thought that Joshua got beat in the first fight against the Cuban. That's what I yeah, thought. Yeah, I thought Savannah beat him comfortably. Richie Woodall thought that, but he didn't say it, did he? Did you, Richie, your company man? Because he's Team EIS, isn't he, up there, Team GB? But he thought that as well. So, but it is what it is, isn't it? Look, you make the most of the hand dealt with you. Joshua gives, gave a couple of people good hiding. He gave somebody a good hiding, didn't he? Brock his bail, got caught with drugs. He ended up in jail, didn't he? The McCracken got him out. They've primed him and wrapped him in cotton wool ever since then, haven't they? It was all planned from day one, wasn't it? The new Frank Bruno. Except in my no, opinion, no, no, wait, 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 wait. We can't just suspect Frank Bruno. Frank Bruno was never wrapped in cotton wool. No, never. hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Let me just know. You know, you know what I mean? You jump, you jump the gun there, Terry. Mm. I'm just saying, Frank Bruno would jab Joshua's head clean off, in my opinion, jab him to death, and he wasn't no special. You know what I mean? What would have primed Tim Wibbs you know, you know. to Joshua? No, I mean, no, no, I want to stand up for Frank Bruno. I don't even know why, but Bruno was one of those guys who, if you hit him in the right spot, you could switch him off, literally switch him off. But Frank Bruno never touched the canvas from what I remember. Yeah. Never. Never touched the canvas. That's a hard man. And look at some of the shots he demolished people with when he was, when he was on his game. Frank Bruno now, would be like the guy Daniel Dubois wishes he was. I, I have a lot of respect for Frank, and it worries me when people associate Joshua with Frank Bruno. Oh, because they're just big and they've got muscles and they're stiff. Frank wasn't stiff. Go and watch his early fights. Before he got to 17 stone, when Frank was about 15, 12. Whew. Frank wasn't what? Stiff? That's not what they're last days, Terry. Ah, oh, here we go. Go on, Forky. Get in there with your Frankie goes to Hollywood outfit. No, I didn't rate Frank Bruno, me. No offence, but I didn't rate him. Every time he stepped up, he got levelled off, didn't he, except McCall. But I think he's good enough to beat Joshua in, at the peaks, in my opinion. Yeah, he, yeah, easily. Hard, he, hard, easily. Harder generation. Yeah. He, uh, easily, and Dylan White. Joshua's the big guy on an estate, right, who's had the same reputation since school, and people were just too scared to test him, right? That's who Joshua is. Like when he goes around Watford, there are people there that would take Joshua's head clean off, and he knows that. He's not. He's not even the king of Watford, man. That's the, so, which is okay because he's an yeah. athlete. But but bloody hell, like stop being out in the media portraying yourself as representing the streets. You represent whatever it is. Is it Meridian, the estate he comes from? I don't know. It's Meridian. That's it. So so what if Joshua doesn't? Fight Usek next, and he has an interim fight, and it's not Dylan White. Surely it's got to be Ergovic or Joyce or somebody Wilder. with some substance. Wilder. Wilder. It's got to be one of them four or Dylan White. Wilder, I think it's White, be Wilder. Wilder White, Ergovic, Joyce. It's got to be one of them four because how could he then be put in a fight with Fury or Usek? Coming back, I'll say, I'll say a weak win. No, no, no. Joshua can fight who he wants. He's the money man in the division. That's one thing I'll always give Joshua this. He has the right to fight. We're talking about wants. reputations, though, here, Terry. If he steps no, aside what? and don't fight anybody with a heartbeat, how can anybody buy into him again? I mean, these casuals are not that stupid, are they? No, mate, listen. No one cares about all that reputation stuff. Let's just strip all the bullshit aside. Nobody cares about reputation, right? The fans will get behind who they're told to get behind. That's what they always do. Joshua just has to say, look, I think the only people Joshua would fight who aren't Usyk right now are Wilder and Chisora. Mm -hmm. That's me. That's what you've got to look forward to for me. If, if it turns out Joshua's stepping aside, you're either going to get Wilder or you're going to get Chisora. That's all. Uh well, it remains to be seen, doesn't it? But it's—I uh, just think his reputation is in tatters if he takes a step aside, money. Me, 
Because he may never get that title shot. What if Fury or Usa get injured? Or what if it's a draw and they've got to fight again? Where does that leave Joshua? Uh, 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 where, where does it leave him then? Just somebody that's waving a piece, piece of paper about that. Like, look, Lennox Lewis took five million, didn't he step aside years ago, right? But Lennox Lewis waited a long time, didn't he, for his shot, didn't he? Do you remember? He, let's see who... But everyone, Holyfield's taking a step aside. Everyone takes step aside, man. Oh, yeah, but right. we're right. talking right. about Big Meachie and said he's a road man and he's about that life and he wants Usyk next and he's fucking sick of losing and he's coming for Usyk. Now, That's... in the cold, hard light of day, his arsehole's flapping, isn't it? So that was his problem, you see, Russ. Like, once you put the 15 million out and that was being talked about in Dubai, Coogan hears about it. And so Coogan's like, oh, would you step aside? And then Joshua realizes people have sussed out that he said he would. And he tries to backtrack in that interview, right? And he goes, people know better than to ask me those sorts of questions. And you're like, uh, I don't know. And by the end of that, he's like, well, I might take step aside money. So he's always been open to taking the step aside, right? It's just that, there are a lot of people who are, you know, these Joshua fans and they're obsessed about Joshua and they to see their hero looking weak is heartbreaking to them. But for me, take the step aside. Don't take the step aside. I don't care because you've still got to fight someone half decent. Yeah. Well, he's got to fight somebody <laughs> now because when I go through his CV, mate, you know, Charlie Martin, Eric Molina, Dominic Brazil, Povetkin, pool labs, people like that. Andy Ruiz, he was supposed to be a cream puff, wasn't he? He's had it all his own way, hasn't he? Now, now that he's not got it his own way and he knows he's in a fight and he could get licked again, he looks to me like Apple Crumble. He last way it looks, Terry. It looks like he don't want the he don't, he looks like he hasn't got the minerals for the job. Here's what I'll say. Whoever ends up being undisputed, like what a run you're gonna have to go on. So you win the undisputed and you've got to deal with White, Dubois, Hergovic or Yoka. Joyce. That's a run of four fights that will probably end your career anyway. So if you're yeah. Joshua, you're looking at that going, in fact, Joshua and Fury, you're looking at that going, I ain't got time to fight all of those guys. So really, if I'm Fury, I'm like, give me undisputed now. And I, there's no one left to fight for me. I'm out. If I'm Joshua, I'm like, give me Undisputed. Give me White. Give me Wilder. And I'm out. I'm not trying to fight these young guys. As soon as the Undisputed thing happens, those belts are going to scatter. I promise yeah, yeah, you. Well, no one's going to want to defend them. Yeah, but as long as we get an Undisputed, that's the positive. Let's look at the positive. Let's say we get an Undisputed and Fury beats Oops, I keep big favourite one because for his size. Fury, but we already know Fury is the man anyway. So what's Fury got to prove? He don't need to prove anything. Why does he have to do Joshua's dirty work? Is he Joshua's little bitch? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I forgot you don't like Fury. Oh my god! Listen, mate. There's gonna there's gonna be <laughs> there's gonna be some twists and turns in the plot because all they like doing down there at Brentford, at Matchroom, is just writing scripts, don't they? There's more twists and turns in the plot. The plot thickens, as they say. It's like watching Cora, isn't it? Well, well, it all has to come to a head in the next 10 days because yeah. people have to start running off the camp and you've got to get your fight in before Canelo fights in May mm. or you don't fight again till June. And in, in the uh, uh, purse, purse bids today or somewhere for... Wednesday, Dylan, yeah. Wednesday, tomorrow, isn't it? Tomorrow, Dylan White against... Uh, Fury. Fury, per, purse bids. Eddie doesn't like purse bids. They always like to get a deal done, don't they, before it all goes to purse bids. Because they're not in control, are they? Anybody could bid for by it, couldn't they? And they, they could be out, out of the way, couldn't they, all them, huh? So maybe that's gonna... what's happened here. Maybe they've just created the storm to make yeah. all of this noise so everyone's now tuned in to see what happens next. And they come out and go, right, Fury's fighting Dilly at the end of March. Josh is going to fight Usyk mid-April. And then the winner of that We'll meet in, I don't know, October. Done. Why can't they have that anyway? That's what we want. We want Fury White 
They all said Joshua, and the winners face off each other, don't they? Said all this rematch crap. Yeah, but Porky, that wasn't going to get you two million impressions or whatever. It wasn't going to get you controlling social media like it likes happened now, because now Joshua's the main name when you're talking about the heavyweight division. He's that he's that name that's trending. Okay. Which he okay. shouldn't be because yeah. he hasn't got a belt. Right. I'm just coming to that now. Joshua's not got a fucking belt. Fury's got one belt. Usek's got four. Or Fury's got ring belt. I don't count that because what we're going to have next, fucking Beano magazine belt or dandy. Look, it's all about Lenil talking. Lenil yeah, okay. Fury, Fury's, Fury's the man. We know that. But Usek's got all the belts. It's like he's a fucking after four. Dylan White's not being in a European title and he's chatting fucking bollocks as well. It's a fucking mess. He's driving me around. Ben, it's no wonder I had a fucking stomach ulcer. Fuck! But, uh, but yeah, I see where you're coming from, but uh, what would be the best scenario, do you think, Terry? Uh, for me, Fury fights Dillian, Joshua fights Usyk, and there's an agreement that the winners will fight each other. Yeah. That's all the fans want to hear. That is, is the only thing we want to hear, because if I don't hear that, I'm not paying for any of the fight. I'm not paying for anything to do with that fight. And I don't think anyone should. I agree wholeheartedly, mate. I agree with you, mate. I agree, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens, isn't it? Exciting times ahead. Exciting times ahead. I, I, I was listening to, uh, to the other day, actually. He come out with that compelling. He come out with that. That last Sky show. He had to slip that in, but he forgot. A cacophony of noise. You forgot that one. <laughs> but uh, big shout out to Russ Gerard, training Vidal uh, Riley. Uh, oh, is he training Vidal Riley? Vidal Riley. Russ Gerard's training him now, and uh, Vidal's dad as a pro. Helping out, as a pro, yeah. As a pro, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me apologise to Russ actually, because I know Russ wanted to organise some sparring between his lot and my old lot, but I haven't been able to do that because simply I'm not there anymore. So apologies for that, Russ, man. There was some some dark politics happening that, you know, I can't go into, but yeah, you know, we, 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 we move on. He's got one of the best uh, national champion records in country, Russ, you know, for amateurs, that gym. Well, for, for, for like schoolboys and that, yeah. No, no, not for like adults, no, no. Yeah, but we have to judge him on video, don't we? Let's see how he does women, don't we? You know, he's dipped his toes yeah. into pro, pro game, and that's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, good luck to the guy. I'm never going to disrespect the guy that's putting his balls on the line. So good luck to Russ. Get out there. Do your thing. Like, Vidal's West Ham through and through, so... Is he, he West Ham? Him. I think it's just been done, haven't they, by man, you? Yeah, no, no, but Vidal trained. He was, he was like a... Was he a junior champion for West Ham? He, he, yeah, he wore yeah. the best, so... That's he on, uh, I think he, he were um, a, a junior star when Mark Tibbs were, I think, they grew up together, didn't they? Not the East Ham boys or something. Who? Mark Tibbs and Vidal Mark Riley? Tib no, I'm, oh, you're, oh, no, we're on about Russ Gerrard, him and Tibbs are the East Ham boys, aren't they? Mm. I didn't know where, I didn't know where Vidal Riley's from. He's, he's a London kid, he's London, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's ex-West Ham as well. He's ex and you're, you're Fitzroy Lodge, aren't you? Wow, yeah, yeah. Same as David A. So, and what? what's the Gale? Dale Youth? Yeah. Same as Groves. Good, some good clubs there, but there used to be some battles between them lot. No, no, because they kind of rose and fell at different times. So, so West Ham, if you read really down boxing, West Ham will always produce junior and schoolboy chaps, right? Yeah. Not as not as good at the senior ranks, mostly because their lads all turn pro around eighteen. So that's one yeah. of the reasons you got to give them their credit. Um, Repton, champion after champion after champion, and then you got clubs like Fitzroy Lodge, the Lynn, who consistently produce guys who turn out to be half decent at something, even if it's not boxing. Yeah. And then you get clubs like and, and Earlsfield as well. You got to give Earlsfield their respect. And then you get clubs like Dale Youth, and every five years they'll find someone brilliant. Like, remember they had that era of John O'Donnell, George Groves, James DeGale, 
And then that was followed up by Dion Juma coming in at the tail end of that as well. Yeah, yeah. So they, yeah, so they had that really good run under Mickey Delaney. So shouts out to him. They, they're rebuilding at the moment, but they'll come good. They'll come good again. Okay. Oh, they got the young kid. Um, they got the young kid, JP O'Meara, who just won an amateur tournament in Finland. He'll be yeah. a good pro when he turns over. Yeah. All right. Uh, I want to touch on the uh, drug testing. Uh, carry on. Connor Ben, Chris Billum Smith, Lee McGregor. Uh, all were dropped by WBC, but Conor Ben has been reinstated. I don't know about the other two. What did you make of all that? It happens all the time. Yeah. I think they did it with Khan as well. They do it loads of times because what because because no other governing body demands you do that. You just forget, to be honest with you, mate. You just forget. Remember, Dillian had to get bounced out of there as well, or he he came close to because he wasn't signed up to that, so he had to sign up. Yeah, but Dylan, Dylan White's a two, already had a two-year ban for performance enhancing drugs, and it's coming up three years since his B sample went missing. So he's the last person to start complaining, isn't he really? <laughs> well, am I right? And they're the facts, aren't we? We're getting on for three years this just this this summer. Uh I wanted to touch on Tyson Fury accusing Usek of taking steroids. What do you think to that? Pot calling kettle black. Black Earth. <laughs> Mate, just, just go back and listen to Fury's voice in 2011 and listen to Fury's voice now. Now, there's a thing that they call the Nandrolone voice, right? And most people who take Nandrolone, their voice changes. It becomes a bit like this. It, it right? happens. And you, yeah, and, and if, you, if you ever listen to women who take Nandrolone, and you just Google it, females taking Nandrolone, listen to their voices as well. It's the same thing. Because in adulthood, your voice shouldn't change that much. It should change when you get bigger. So let's say Porky's 28 stone. Your voice will sound different at 28 stone than it will at 13 and a half, just because it's a different chamber. But all, you shouldn't All my voice big. said when I was 28 stone nine, mate, all it used to say was, say me again, love. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> usual, sweetheart. Usual, a packet of pork scratchings. <laughs> 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 yeah so so I, look what's happened is it's just been revealed that all these guys at the top are juicy right so I don't even know why they're throwing rocks at each other about drugs I don't know why no Usex an Olympic gold medalist he's he's an undisputed cruiserweight champion he's 19 and 0 and he's got four of the five belts at heavyweight so as far as I'm concerned, he's probably the best boxer on the planet because I can't put Canelo in that bracket. See, we all know what's been going on there. He invented a division at 155. He's failed dope tests. Never won an Olympic medal, obviously. No, 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 no. The people Canelo faced oh, well. are light years. The people Canelo boxed against are light years ahead of the people who he boxed against. Yeah, but Terry, no is he a convicted drug cheat? Yes. All right. Well, well, okay, no, no, wait, wait, hold on. Are we comparing records here or are we comparing blood samples? Records are for DJs, Terry. Aren't they? If we're comparing blood samples, Canelo's a fucking cheat. So everything he's done, there's an asterisk next to it, in my opinion. You can have your opinion. No, you know no. I, 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 do you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna crucify the ones that get caught because that, that would be assuming that the ones that don't get caught aren't taking anything. And I'm like, that's not. Well, they're all tested, aren't they? I mean, when he gets nope. tested, same. Nope. Nope. Not true. Well, we can argue on this one till cows come on. I'll, I'll, no, 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 no. That's a fact. No, no, Russ, Russ that's a yeah. fact. No, people don't get tested. No one's going to the middle of fucking Ukraine to go and take a piss sample for Manzander Why not? No one's going to the depth. Why not? They're paid to fly no. out there. Yeah. And how many times can you do that before you go, guys, you're blowing the budget out the water here? Oh, so that so that's the answer to everything. Is it training in the middle of fucking nowhere? Well, why do you think people do it? So does that mean people who are training in London and Vegas and New York are vulnerable to drug testers? Then yeah. Yeah. So Las Vegas is the home of Bada, so they only have to go up the road to get you. Um, London, kind of. I mean, you got you got two world class labs there for you, guys. So they can come and get you there too. 
Or you do what some people do. You just have someone on the inside that lets you know when your test is coming. Oh, that's good. Well, this is how I look at it. Canelo has an asterisk next to every win, in my opinion. But that's my opinion. You know, you maybe don't agree with that. Usyk, till he fails the test, as far as I'm concerned, he is the man at the pound-for-pound pound rankings. Usyk's the man. Errol Spence, he's up there as well. Old Deputy Dog. Sounds like Deputy Dog, doesn't it? Yeah. Have you heard that Deputy Dog cartoon? That's Errol, <laughs> Errol Spence. Eh? Before my time, Porky. Errol, go, go put Deputy Dog YouTube on and then put Errol Spence on. They both sound the fucking same. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so Errol Spence is up there. Who's it? He knew, he knew who. He will, he will put Jamie McDonald into orbit. Uh, he knew who. Uh, who would you put after that, Terry? I mean, this is your list, man. Like, okay. My list is good. You my, put my list Tyson is Fury different. in there, wouldn't you? Even though, nope. you know, he, nope. he, his record's a bit... No, he's got dope testing, on it, so we can't put him in. We're struggling, aren't we? We're struggling to get a top five up there, aren't we? <laughs> We're struggling to get a top five of clean athletes. I think you're going to have to put Joshua in your list. Crawford, no, no, you have to put... Are you going to put Joshua in your list then? No, I'm not going to put Joshua in my list. He ain't got a fucking belt. Only belt he's got to his name is a fucking snake belt that he lent off Gareth A. Davis. Speaking of Gareth A. Davis, did you see that red leather jacket he had on? Nah, man, I don't... I don't watch all that. Took know. a bit of pressure off me. I know, man. Frankie says, relax. <laughs> you piss taking fuck you, mate, aren't you? <laughs> How's Rico anyway? Is he all right? Has he been skiing? I don't know, man. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think he wants to travel again after Christmas. I think he's, he, he's all good just staying, staying in London, chilly. Rico thinks London's warm, doesn't he, compared to uh, Finland? Jesus. Well it, well, it is, mate. We'll have to go out there for a lads' weekend in Finland there and rip shit up. What do you reckon? Uh, uh, <laughs> so here's the thing, Russ. Like, no, wrong. F- Finns will literally rip shit up. Really? What? Do they have big like, thinkers like, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I was, I, I had a corporate dude in like the north of Finland once, about 10 years ago. Yeah. And uh, everyone was sensible, really quiet, respectful, humble. And there was like an after after event. And all guys just drinking vodka out the bottle. No mixer, nothing, just swigging. And these are guys who are on, they were probably on half a mil a year, swigging out there. Like, they'll get you thrown out their own party. Like, <laughs> breaking back in, getting thrown out again. And I just remember the police being called at six in the morning because basically they just trashed the hotel. Like once once the Finns get a few drinks in them, they're a lot of fun. A lot right. of fun. Yeah. Yeah, Rico's a good night out when he's had a swill. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, Chris Medley's out in uh, Italia getting his teeth done. They'll probably do it for free because it's Chris Medley. I know. He'll be chatting Michelle up, won't he? <laughs> hey. He he never stops. What's happening with his with his kid Nikki? Has Nikki got hold of Sonny yet? He's just had a spine operation. Spinal operation. I'm not, I'm not sure if he's out of his wheelchair or not yet. Uh, oh, I don't know if he's bumped well, into well, Sonny Edwards, but I don't really care. I think he's just had his he's had a spinal operation and he's been bed bound for a bit. I'm not sure if he's up walking, but I know his brother. His brother fights in April on a Black Cat promotion show in Sheffield. Luke, he's looking well. What way is Luke going to fight at? Uh, middle way, I think. Okay. It looks, looks well. It looks well. So, yeah. Oh, oh, it's all good baby, baby. Uh, what about spot- you and Dennis? Your friends yet? No, no, I've not spoke to Dennis. No, I've not spoke to Dennis. Dennis knows where I mean, like I said, he come, here, come here, didn't he? Uh, July, it's been two years since I spoke to Dennis this July. Come here, July 29th, I think it was 20, 2020. And I said, oh, you know what I'm like, I'm stubborn, aren't I? But I wish Dennis well. I know he's just signed that Billy Pickles, hasn't he? God. Somebody told me in an email, I forgot his name, some bloke asked me what I thought about 
my pal Dennis signing Billy Pickles. Well, we yeah. put Quinn Ahmed in with Billy Pickles and uh, he held his own and he hadn't turned pro yet, Quinn. So we're going to see, aren't we? But uh, good luck to Dennis. He's a trier. Uh, I think it, I think this show he's got on next month, I think he would have given over 30 people the debuts in under a year. So that's good, isn't it? That's good for the sport. Like, you know, we need, for... we need more like that. Dennis, if you're watching, and I know you are, how many of them 31 are from white collar? I know. <laughs> I can't help it, can I? Uh, so that's about it. But Cash Alley's headlining. I've just been talking to his cousin next door. Uh, and Cash hasn't got an opponent. So I, I don't agree with you like that. And his belt's not on the line, the IBF European. So what, what's going off there? Why would you have an IBF European and you're not defending it? I don't get that. But oh, someone's got to, someone's got to challenge him for it, right? Yeah, someone's got to challenge him for it. Then you've got to pay him to fly him all over, aren't you? IBF people and all that. They'll, they all want some of that free gratis, don't they? <laughs> They'll want pulling up in Rutland at Sheffield, don't they? They need somebody to go running up and down stairs all night, keeping them happy with bottles of wine. Would you like a that coach? One, but- Go on, what? What, Rutland or Leopold? What's the best, where is the best hotel in Sheffield? Well, Dennis puts him at Rutland, doesn't he? But I prefer Hilton. But uh, I'm not going to say all this for us. There's a bottle of wine there for you. Would you like a corkscrew with that, sir? Now it's for when I get home, it's for my missus. I'm not gonna, I'll tell you all this at wine again. Yeah. But uh, I thought, all oh, right, that's how it works, is it? You know, because I was Mr. Naive on her back in the day. I'm fucking not now, am I? Free gratis, that's all they want, these fuckers, mate. Free gratis, it wants blowing up and starting again with proper people. I'd nominate Julian McGowan for, for the place on board, mate, because he's got integrity, hasn't he? He's got that bit of integrity. He never took a penny off Gary's site, not a penny all the way through. He put his own savings into his own gym, never took a penny. So what, and then when it come down to Gary Sykes, Fighting Liam Walsh, you know, he fought Liam Walsh, don't you? End of his career, yeah. Now he lost his finger leading up to the fight, but yet they still let him fight, didn't they? Julian walked away, Julian walked. So Gary Sykes fought Liam Walsh with half a missing finger in the middle of his hand. Imagine that you got an hand like that and a finger missing. How bad's that? That finger there, how, how bad yeah. is that? Hey, what, what? Oh, so we'll wrap his hands, we'll do this to that. I'm not going to say he wrapped his hands on that. Uh, but point is, this is the sport of boxing. So, and this is the board of control, like Robert Smith coming into a dressing room with five minutes to go saying, you've got to beat Walsh tonight for your belt outright. When Gary thought he already had his belt outright because he took his belt off him, didn't they? So at, at some stage. So, but that's what you're up against, aren't you, with these people? And, that, and that's why I can understand why people walk away from the sport. But whatever I've got an hole in my ass, I'll back Gary Sykes' story. I don't know how. I mean, I mean, we might have to go down the billboard route. I don't know. That's flushes <laughs> about, doesn't it? A good old fucking billboard. Isn't that right, Penfold? You didn't like that fucking billboard, did you, Penfold? So we're going to see, aren't we? Because I'm one of them people now, I'm at that, that stage in my life where... You can't go around causing bollocks, can you? Because you get sent to jail. So you can. Yeah. There's, there's more than one way to skin a cat. The pen's mightier than the sword. But I don't agree with what happened to Gary Sykes. I don't agree at all. And I always back the fighter. If people think I don't think, if people think I've never backed the fighter, I feel like with Dennis, I'll back Josh Whaler and his dad. Because what's right is right. You might know, like, yeah, but, but, no, 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 that's fucking wrong. It's like years ago, Mike Tyson was going off rails one in, he needed somebody to say to him, hey, Mike, come on, that's wrong, that. That's wrong, and that's right. Well, I was fucking that guy when I was Jenny. See, Jenny, I don't agree with that, that's wrong. Yeah, but, I said, no, no, no I don't agree with that. And there's only so many of them that you can put, put up with in the sport of boxing till <laughs> that's it, and then you walk. And that's what happened. But I always back Josh Whale. Good people. But the rules are there to be manipulated. And when people are putting your hand in the pocket and putting shows on, their main objective is to get money back by hook or by crook within the rules. 
So I can understand certain people's points of views, but I'm a straight shooter. And once you tell me a lie, all else you say to me is no fucking God. The trust goes. And that and that's that's it shouldn't be like that, should it? But it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. No, but it? here's the thing, Russ. Well, yeah. Here's the thing I'll say. When you make life easy for boxers, you get Danny Connor, right? You get Danny Connor. in my pocket, yeah. That's what I'm about. Well, yeah. sorry, go on. Yeah, you get, you get guys like Danny Connor. Don't bother making you wait. Don't is that him with old Manky Tifa works on the building site, man, and wait? That's oh, 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 I forgot. I forgot you, you two are beefing pretty sad. <laughs> Even when Vent stuff about when you've got to come and do me in. Fucking hell, don't I say thought, that. I thought, I thought, I thought he came to your front door. Never fucking met him in my life. Never met him in my life. Never spoke to him in my life. So you so. see, a lot, a lot, a lot of boxers, Porky, are lazy. Yeah, are lazy. So you can say, "I'll back the fight to all that." Yeah, that's fine. But there, there's some guys that you look at it and you're like, "Mate, you got what you deserve." Yeah. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know guys who. They have the chance to join a certain promoter and they said, I'm not going to do that because I want to stay loyal to my manager. It's like, yeah, but that's going to set your career back four or five years. What happens four or five years later? Terry, you're right. I'm like, okay, but now look, your career's in tatters. What are you going to do now? Boxers, too lazy, not intelligent enough for their own good. So I, there's a handful of guys I genuinely feel sorry for in the sport. The rest of them, Nah, that's it's just what happens. Look at Liam Cameron, right? His ban's up in it in April, his four year ban. Now, if Liam had anything about himself, he'd have been he'd have been in good shape, wouldn't he? But it, it's gone now, it's gone now, isn't it? If you're not trained for four years, you never get that back, will you? Nah, I don't think he wants to. No, 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 it's not stuffing on him, did it? When you're a Commonwealth champion, world rank number 12, and then you get a ban and you're screaming that you've had doubt. Whether he's touched, whether he's handled money and it's got into his hands, he's saying he's handled money that's had cocaine on it. Now, and it's a minute bit, so minute, it could have been handled off touching money. But when you haven't got the legal people behind you and the finances to, to battle these people, you fucked. Fury did have, didn't he? I and mean, heavyweight's yeah. a big business. But I, I feel for Liam, in, in a way, I do, because I, I know him and you know him, he's a nice kid. But boxers yeah. sometimes shoot shoot themselves in the foot, don't they? I suppose. So, so he didn't like for me. He got that sort of thing where they've let people off before. Yeah, I, I, I think with him, if he had just copped to it and said, "Listen, wh whether it's that I was around the wrong people or whatever, mm -hmm. I messed up. Sorry, guys. Um, what do you need me to do to make this right? If he had done that, he'd be boxing now." Liam never has no look, you know. When he beat that, uh, his last fight, he won his last fight. He, uh, we all had a chat after the fight, five, ten minutes, whatever. And he went off to get in his new Audi. He got, he got a new Audi, uh, A5, whatever. And he's gone flying down Parkway in this Audi. Now, when you get in, in, in them cars, I've made the same mistake myself. You think your lights are on because your lights automatically come on on dash because it's a new, new car. But his lights weren't turned on, so he's gone bombing down, uh, took it for a spin. You can, if you win fight, you will get keys and all that. So he's gone bombing down Sheffield. Anyway, police have pulled him, haven't they? They've gone, fucking hell, Liam, we've just been watching you back at the station. Oh, oh Liam's gone, uh, 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 uh. so they've, they've took him for drink driving. Got him back to town, left him, in, left him a bit, and then tested him, and then they were all right. They've had to let him go, but that's the type of bad luck that Liam has. Do you, do, you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You couldn't make yeah. that up, could you? Like, you can't. You can't make that up. But I, I wish him well. Uh, and uh, but I don't think he'll fight again. And I think it's a shame because Chris put years and years into him, didn't he? Yeah. Um, well, I think it's what, a, 15, sad, 17 years. Yeah, but but Liam didn't help himself at times. I mean, when he lost the fight, I forgot how how he lost the fight, but he ended up. He went to Clinton, Clinton Woods were training him, and then he rung in one day and said, I can't train today. So Clinton said, you are? Because you can imagine Clinton, can't you? Never missed a session. Yeah. Clinton's gone, you are? You're not training? I now have dropped a tin of beans on my toe. 
So I couldn't and shot up to his house, got into the house. Where it's beans are dropped on your toe, kind of thing. There's no empty tin in bin, and there's no tin of beans in cupboard. <laughs> so, so, so I said, I don't know what was said there. It must have been a bag of sugar or something. But the point I'm trying to make is, you know, when you've been a world champion, you've been at that level, and Clinton fought in a great era, didn't he? World champion over three years. I mean, who has a belt over three years? And then you, you, you're training fighters, and if they don't show that same commitment as you, that's it, it can all but fall. That's probably why Frotch ain't going to train people, or, and McCracken does, because McCracken only got to British level, didn't he? He didn't go all the way, did he? Do you know what I mean? He fought for a while. He fought Keith Holmes, didn't he? But he got knacked, didn't he? He lost against yeah. Keith Holmes, didn't he? I, no, I think Frotch will train someone. He, I, might, I might actually do some work with Carl myself. Fucking hell, I'm sure you'll do some work with you when he gets his hands around that neck of yours. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not George. Yeah, he won't get close. <laughs> I'm going to go see him in a few weeks and get some gloves signed, and we're going to do a competition on here. And I'm going to get him on phone to you on video link, Terry. Ah, sort, listen. You can sort this listen. intense beef out. On the cobbles. On the, yeah, on the cobbles, yeah, on the cobbles. Like him and Joe Calzaghe on cobbles. <laughs> so... Right, it's half 11, we've had an hour, we've wrote, wrote a few rounds, and I've filled a bit of time, and I've got hospital at two o'clock, but I'm going to get this uploaded, get these Puma Hard plays wrapped up, go pay my credit card bill, and then I went to hospital, so I've filled a bit of time, it's a bit crap, isn't it, sat in house in this weather, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's great. It's super, super great at the moment. Uh, I, I get, I get, I get, uh, I get stuck in that, in that bed mode, bed, internet to the site, telly. I'm like, fat control, thin control around the old remotes and mouse, and I'm just like <laughs> this, uh, ringing downstairs. Yeah, fetch me some soup, up, fetch me a shake up. I've got it all sussed out. Anna, but today I'm about to come out. Uh, I've got that to send to Cumbria. Martin Cartledge, is it your name? I'll give, him a, I'll give him a shout out like I mentioned it the other day. See the guy who's won. Uh, lucky sod. But loads of people entered. More people entered for Puma Hard Play than they did Holyfield Glove. Martin Cartledge, Windermere, Cumbria. So nice up there. I think Peter, yeah. Fury, I think Peter Fury's got a place up there. Nice up there. Mm. Uh, I don't know if we're allowed to say that publicly. Pardon? I don't know if we're allowed to say that publicly. P Peter may have access to a property there. I think it's like Lake, Lake District. Yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, they've got, they've got some up there. I'm, I'm not sure what place it is, but it's nice. But uh, it's nice up there if you want to keep fit and go jogging up in hills and stuff. So, okie dokie then. Well, listen, I'll let you get back to your uh, what you're doing today for your bank and all that. Hey, tell you, I didn't know you used to work for Royal Bank of Scotland. I've worked with every bank. Pardon? I've worked with every bank. Before. Goldman Sachs as well. Ah, uh, my younger years, yeah. The rip, so I, did my in I was an intern there, yeah. Didn't they rip the world off? <laughs> oh, yeah, this big conspiracy. Yeah, they, they ripped the world, the world off, didn't they, for fucking billions, didn't they? Or were it trillions in 2008? They weren't the worst. Like, they were, they were Bear other Stern, Stearns, why weren't they? Lehman, Bear Stearns, Lehman, uh, Bear Stearns, Merrill Lynch, Merrill Lynch. They all, but they're all still going, aren't they? Except Bear Stearns, aren't they? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. So the, How can that be? <laughs> How can that be though? And they never paid any of that money back. Not one person went to jail for all that. They tipped the world upside down. Nobody went to jail for it. But yet, I had police at my door recently over a bus lane fine, banging on my door, mate. Over a bus lane fine. What's all that about? You know, you know what, Porky? You don't contribute to their political party. The minute oh, you do, oh. no one knocks on your door. Is that how it, is that how it works out, is it? No, no, do you know what? I remember talking to my friend's dad and like her old man's a pretty serious guy in South London. And I just said, mate, the best 10 grand you can spend every year is putting into the Tory party. You'll never get bothered in your life. Yeah, that is the it's the best thing you can do in this country. If you've got a spare few quid, I'm surprised Dennis doesn't do it. Just put money into these parties, and then when you need something from them, they'll just give it to you. 
Dennis spends all his money on kettle crisps, and not Balsamic vinegar. <laughs> nice flavour. Nice with a bottle of red, aren't they? From his wine mm. cellar. <laughs> right. Okie dokie then. Well, listen, you take care, Terry. Thanks too, for coming mate. on. And we're going to get this out today about four o'clock. How's that? Oh, no worries, mate. Peace out. Peace out. Well, that was Terry Chapandama, the banker from London. Them bankers have got no scruples, have they? Hey? They ripped the world off, didn't they? They turned the world upside down and nobody uh, has been held accountable, have they? Hey? Unbelievable, isn't it? Okie dokie then. Well, I think we'll get these trainers wrapped up. I wonder if I can find any sellotape in this place, a packaging company. But I can't find no sellotape. So, all right then. Have a good day. Uh, thanks for listening. Just filled a bit of time. All right. Peace out.